Hi, I am Inder Rana. I'm an Azure technology specialist with uh, Microsoft, uh, specializing in data and analytics. And this video is about Fabrix uh, samples. Greg Beaumont and myself, uh, Greg Beaumont is a peer of mine. We have set up this uh, uh, GitHub repository with samples for Fabric. Uh, Fabric is a pretty exciting new product from Microsoft. It uh, is the platform for end-to-end uh, -end data analytics. So we have created this GitHub repo with some samples which can be used in a demo fashion or even workshops um, with the healthcare specific data sets. Uh, I'll be just walking you through the setup for the, uh, the direct lake module over here. Um, to just give a little bit of a context, uh, it uses uh, data from CMS, uh, Medicare Part D data, uh, which uh, records the prescriptions, uh, prescription drugs uh, by, by providers over the years, so that you can analyze if uh, what kind of uh, prescription drugs a particular provider has been prescribing. And here is the architecture diagram. Uh, CMS makes these files in CSV format available, one per year. Um, We'll download those CSV files and then upload them to the lake house. Um, then we'll use Spark Notebook to create a Delta Parquet table where um, all the files will be combined and there'll be a column for the year. Um, and we'll do some very basic data engineering work like um, changing some data types, uh, creating some new columns based on existing columns. Uh, once the data parquet, Delta Parquet table is created, I will use Power BI to create reports on top of it. Um, I will just cover this prerequisite and the first section over here of setting up the uh, Spark notebook and creating the Delta Park table. And Greg will be the one who will be covering the remaining steps over here of uh, uh, setting up Power BI reporting. So let's get started over here. The first thing we want to do is you want to check the Fabric Web workspace. I will just go back to the workspaces. I have a workspace set up. As you see, there are different kind of item types are showing up here, like notebook and lake house, SQL endpoint, because this is a Fabric workspace. Um, Fabric is an extension of uh, Power BI. Power BI uses used to have like reporting and data sets, but now we have different uh, um, artifacts available here. One thing you want to check is go to workspace settings and premium. And you should have either the trial fabric capacity or premium capacity. One of those three licensing modes selected um, to be able to use uh, fabric capabilities. Um, fabric um, uh, makes these different uh, experiences available for different personas. So if I'm in the Power BI persona right now, but if I click this um, button over here for Power BI, I can go to the data engineering experience um, and uh, let's see what do I have in my I should bring up my GitHub repo here and look at the steps so I don't miss anything. We just reviewed the fabric workspace. The first thing we'll use do is uh, create this new lake house. So creation of a new lake house is pretty simple. I am on the data engineering experience. I click this lake house and let's see CMS drug lake house 2. So just for it to be unique, it's pretty quick to create a new lake house. It'll be empty, won't have anything in there while well, that is loading. Uh, OK, so I will just have copy paste another of the URLs, another link we will need. Um, so I'm back here on my lake house and currently it's empty. Um, we want to load files on the files section of the lake house, uh, but before that we should just go and follow the step by step directions here. The direction here is to uh, download the the notebooks, the Spark notebook. Um, let's see. At times you get an error. Nope, it's all good here. Our uh, notebook is here. We'll just click the download button over here to download the uh, the notebook. Um, download is uh, is successful. So I'll go back to my Fabric workspace. What we want to do is we want to go to the home experience here and import that notebook. So I click import, I click upload, then I found the location where I downloaded my notebook. Here it is. It's uploading. It doesn't take too long for the notebook to be imported. Um, I'll just go to workspace and I'll just filter to notebook. Yep, it's already there. So I'll just open the notebook here. The first time you open the notebook, um, 
you do get an error message because it reference a different lake house, which I was using when I checked into the um, checked on, checked in the the notebook into GitHub. So what I need to do is I need to do this remove all lake houses and then I click add button and then I pick existing lake house and click add and then I pick this lake house over here. Um, at this point, our notebook is all set up and we will not run the, the notebooks right away. There are a couple steps listed here at the top of the notebook. What we need to do is we need to download some CSV files to a local machine and then we need to upload them to the lake house. Um, we are keeping things simple. Uh, this is all manual for now, but at some point maybe we'll make it automated. So if you go to this uh, CMS uh, website, you can click the download button and you can pick whichever uh, year you want to download the data for files for um, it would be good if you download the whole years. Uh, there'd be one file for each about three to four GB for each file, uh, so not too much uh, of data, maybe 27 GB around that uh, that much. It does take time to download these files um, depending upon your air, depending upon your internet connection, so I will not wait for downloading these files. I have already downloaded handful of files uh, which I will demonstrate uploading to your lake house. Um, so there are a couple methods to um, to upload files into your lake house. First, I will go back to my lake house here, uh, lake house view. I can click this ellipses next to the files. I can click upload and then upload files and then I pick the downloaded file, the, the files I have downloaded, um, but I prefer Azure Storage Explorer a little bit more than the web interface for uploading files. Um, one lake is compatible with ADLS Gen 2, so you can use AD, you can use a Azure Storage Explorer. And to use that, what you do is you again go to ellipses and click properties. You have this URL available over here. I can copy the URL. I go to Azure Storage Explorer. I click this uh, connect icon here on the left navigation. This should pop open this uh, dialog here. I will pick ADLS Gen 2. As I mentioned, one lake is compatible with ADLS Gen 2. I select Azure Active Directory. I'll pick the right uh, username and the AAD tenant, and I click Next, and then I copy paste the URL, and then I'll say Fabric, CMS, Workspace, and I click Next. Connect. At this point, I have this one lake showing up in the Storage Explorer. I can go and upload the files. Um, I can pick multiple files at the same time. I can just at least pick two and click upload. Um, this will start the transfer to of files to my lake house. Uh, let's go back. So it does take a little bit of time and I'm not going to wait for that long for the for the upload to be complete. But once the upload is complete, you'll see files showing up right here uh, in this files folder. It shows up in this uh, the right uh, tab here. And at this point, let's go back to our notebook uh, so that we can I can walk you through that. So once you upload files, if you click here, they will show up over here once the file upload is complete. Um, Pretty simple notebook. Um, I just the first statement or the first cell here is to drop the existing table. The idea is if you run this notebook multiple times, I don't want you to be running into errors. So I'm just dropping and starting clean. Um, there's a dictionary I have defined for each year. There is a file name, specific file names in the dictionary, and then I just loop through the dictionary and and uh, read the CSV file and write it to a Delta Parquet table. Um, a, a few few um, transformations over here. For example, certain fields are being converted to decimal type, certain to long, and then also I'm creating few um, new columns based on existing columns. I added a column for the year because the CSV file doesn't have a year a value inside, uh, so I, we need that. So it takes about you know 20 25 minutes to load all the files. Um, default settings with Spark were used. I'm sure the the load speed can be can be made more performant or faster loads by 
you know, maybe increasing the size of the nodes or some other Spark techniques, but that we are not going that far in this particular demo. We are keeping things simple, so please just run this notebook in entirety or some cells. Take a break while this is loading, and when you come back, you will have uh, your Delta Spark table created. Um, and over here, there are some simple statements. Um, I just you know read the table to just do a sanity check that the data has been loaded. Um, shows the show the number of rows here in the table it is 223 million if all nine files are used uh, printing the schema and then running some simple query um, so that's all it is i don't think i have anything else i hope this was useful and then uh, greg will carry on with the next steps uh, but this should get you set up uh, with your uh, files uh, for the delta table um, to be able to build some reports on um, thank you